afternoon, sir. Is that clock right? Yes, sir. Western Union time. Corrected every hour. My watch has run down. Listen, I've got just five minutes to spare. Can you shave me in that time? Five minutes? Easy, sir. Easy. Go ahead. Very nice coat, sir. Very nice coat. Your color, too, sir. Fussy, aren't you? Well, sir, I just try to do my work well. Satisfied? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. In a hurry, sir? Yes. I have to attend a meeting at 310. Oh, the auction upstairs? Yeah, you'll have to cut it pretty fine. Don't worry, sir. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. S from the country, sir? Yes, southern. Yeah, I thought so. From the country myself. Really? What part? Well, that would be difficult to say. I've moved around so much, I'm neither a northerner nor a southerner. I'm an American. I did live in a little town near Savannah once. You did? So did I. Yes, sir. I saw you there, though quite infrequently. From there, I went to Philadelphia. What year? Let's see. That was April 12 years ago. I moved to Philadelphia that same month. Did you? I saw you there too, sir. Jesus! What are you doing? I'm hurrying, sir. You needn't break my neck about it. No, sir. No, sir. From Philadelphia, I went to, let's see, Newark. To Newark? And from Newark, I went to Indianapolis. What? And from Indianapolis, I went to the Muscatines for a few months, and then to Chicago, and then, let's see, to Louisville. Huh. One would think you've been following me about. I've lived in every one of those places. Have you, sir? It's a tiny little world, isn't it? Well, this is your first time shaving me. Curious, isn't it? But it may be the last. That's so. I'm leaving town right after the auction. Huh. If I may ask, sir, where are you going? Uh, I don't know yet. Are you going to follow me there as well? <laughs> Sooner or later, sir. It's a long journey you're going to take, isn't it? What makes you think so? It's a long journey we all take, sooner or later, eh? Long journey. You're wasting time, man. Am I, sir? Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Yes. But a little more rain would be good for the crops. Um... You know, the man that runs a shoe store down on the corner, and I was trimming his hair this morning, he was telling me I that don't care what he said. I need to get shaved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and the woman who runs the newsstand upstairs, you know, over by the elevator, why, well, she was saying that she had never... I told you once, I don't care what your friends were saying. I've got to be at that meeting at 310. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry, sir. I always keep my promises. In fact... I remember back when I was living in Savannah, when my poor daughter was alive, I promised her- I don't give a damn for your daughter. No, sir. I don't think you ever did. And your time is up. No, sir. It hasn't begun. What do you mean? Careful, sir. Careful. You don't know how close you came to cutting yourself. You said you would finish me in five minutes. No, sir. If I may al be allowed to contradict you, I did not. When I came in here, you said you would shave me in five minutes. Yes, sir. That is correct, sir. And it's... What? Careful, sir. Careful. The razor is sharp. When I said that I would finish you shaving you in five minutes, I said nothing about lathering. That takes several minutes in of itself. What? What? Now you've done it. 
smarts, doesn't it? You clumsy, awkward, conceited galoot! Don't talk to a gentleman like that, you cur! I did it on purpose. What? You really mustn't accuse me of being clumsy, sir. I'm not clumsy. If I cut you, it was quite intentional. Like this. Damnation, are you crazy? No, sir. Quite sane, sir. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. The razor is frightfully sharp. Just lie back quietly. Quietly. That's it. I want to sit up. If you sit up with the razor at your throat, it's sure to be quite, quite fatal. Then take it away. Oh, no, 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 no. Not until I'm finished. What are you going to do? What is this, uh, a hold up? Well, uh, what am I going to... Take that filthy thing away. What am I going to do with you? I haven't the slightest idea. Haven't you have any ideas? Listen to me. I need to be at that meeting at once. If I'm not there before 3.10, I will be ruined. Do you understand me? Ruined! You needn't raise your voice, sir. My hearing is quite, quite excellent. Can't I convince you? Oh, I believe you, sir. I know all about the meeting. In fact, I know there's going to be an auction. And unless you go up to bid, it will be all up with you. Then you'll let me go there. No, sir, I'm afraid I won't. In fact, if you may allow me to use your own words, I don't give a damn about your meeting. Who the devil do you think you are? Oh, shut up! God. I'll give you $10 to let me go. Big pardon, sir? My watch. It's worth $500. I'll give it I'm to you. I'm sorry, you... sir. I don't hear quite too well on that side. You'll have to try the other. A thousand dollars. I'll give you a thousand dollars. No, I'm afraid it won't do, sir. You see, the young lady upstairs, you're not going to interrupt me this time, are you, sir? She says it's important keep customers in sight. There's nothing so bad for trade as an empty shop. Have you no heart? It's almost too late now. Every second is worth a dollar to me. <laughs> it will console you, sir, to know that my time is worth very little. If I'm not there in two minutes, I might as well shoot myself. <laughs> I shan't object, sir. Oh. Oh. Wait, wait a minute. What is this? Are you showing regrets? I'm glad to see it. I always thought you would show regrets sooner or later. By the way, haven't you recognized me yet? Recognized you? Oh, I see. You thought I was a lunatic. Well, I'm not. Look at me. Look at me closely. I don't know you. No? Well, just tell yourself. Twelve years ago, this man's hair was not so gray. Twelve years ago, this man's face didn't show so many lines of care. Twelve years ago, this man lived in a little town, well, near Savannah. And, uh, you can't be. Say it. Kilburn. Yes, Kilburn. you followed me about? For 12 years. From town to town? I was never more than a week behind you. Good God. Yes, God. I used to think of him quite often, John. I used to ask him why he never brought you into my shop. <laughs> but now he has, John. Now he has. Oh, oh. But he brought you here at last, John. He brought you here at last. For 12 mortal years, I've been hoping for this day. Once, in the Muscatine, you came into my shop. 
there was a customer in the chair, and you wouldn't wait. <laughs> Once in Louisville, you crossed my threshold, looked at your watch, and walked out again. But I always knew, sooner or later, John, that you'd come into my shop and sit down in my chair. And that day has come. You and I, John, we go way back. We have a long account to settle. I've been one of your creditors too, John. And this is the reckoning, John. You're going to pay me. And you're gonna pay me in full. And you're gonna pay me now. What are you going to do? Well, that's a hard question. That's a very, very, very hard question, John. I'd be justified in cutting your throat now, wouldn't I? Who would be murder? Oh, such an ugly word. Murder in the first degree. Oh, of course, yes. They'd catch you. Just as sure as fate. Hey, you know, I wouldn't run. Kilburn, think what you're doing. Oh, John, I've been thinking about it for 12 years. I'm on my back. I'm helpless. <laughs> You'd just run if I let you up. Give me a chance, Gilbert. Just give me a chance. No, John. You get no chance. You gave Jenny none. She was just 18 when you came to town. Only a child, John. Only a child. Her mother was dead, and I was all she had. And she was all I had. I was trying to raise her into the kind of woman her mother had been, if you know what that means. And, and I didn't. Don't I tell didn't. me what you did and didn't do, John. She loved you. And I, I trusted you. You were going to marry her. You took her away, and you didn't marry her. Marriage. Why? You never even thought of it. You took her away. You wanted her, and you got her. You didn't think of me, and you didn't think of her. You treated her like a toy. And when you were finished with her, you threw her into the gutter. It makes me sick to think about it, John. Then, she came back home six months later, John. I don't know how she got back all the way from where you had taken her. I have no idea, and I don't like to guess. I'll marry her now, Kilburn. You'll have to ask her about that. Well... In two minutes, you'll be able to ask her. What do you mean? She's dead, John. She's dead. Oh. <laughs> no. 30 seconds for your prayers, John. I'm too young to die. Don't do this. I'm not fit. Give me a minute. Two minutes. <coughs> your nerve gave out at the end, eh? Your nerve gave out at last. Where am I? You're not in hell, if that's what you're thinking. You're still on God's good earth. You, you didn't kill me. No, I didn't. And you could have. John, when your eyes are beginning to glaze over and your heart's about to stop beating, you won't be closer to death than you were a minute ago. Why didn't you kill me? <laughs> You'll find out why. Tell me, John. For all the men who are so brave with the women, are they such cowards with the men? Or was it on account of that meeting? Meeting? Yes, the meeting. <laughs> 25 pass. I'm ruined. I didn't kill you. Ruined. I left you your life. 
but I made it worthless. I broke you. <laughs> I broke you. I broke you. <laughs> Kilburn. Yes? You thought I was a fool, didn't you? You think I'd tell you the real time of the meeting? <laughs> what do you mean? You ass, you idiot! The meeting doesn't start until 3.30. <laughs> Is that all? Well, that clock is half an hour slow. Huh? <sighs> <sighs>